Hi, my name is Javid Kohli and I am a member of DLC's Global Hospitality and Travel Committee. Welcome to my DLC talk. So today we're going to basically get into how the hospitality industry has kind of revived from the COVID-19 pandemic and how we're taking it from 2020 straight into the future in just a span of a couple of years because of all the changes that were brought around because of the pandemic. If we talk about the hospitality industry in India and the way that was impacted by COVID-19, almost 40% of hotels and restaurants in India have shut down permanently. About 20% of them haven't quite fully bounced back and most of them are still running in losses. However, the Indian hospitality industry is one of those, like the global hospitality industry, that is so resilient that despite the hit of almost 1.3 lakh crores in revenue because of the ongoing health crisis. They have implemented a whole bunch of strategies and changes and have now progressed from the challenges of COVID-19 towards a better tomorrow. So one of the changes we're observing in the industry, uh, like most other industries, is remote working. The sanitary crisis has forced many businesses to implement telework as a part of their new procedures. And in most cases, remote working has been efficient and productive for the employee as well as the employer. Um, on the positive side, most employees believe that it's giving them a much better sense of work-life balance, um, optimization, flexible time schedules, as well as commuted time savings in terms of going back and forth from work. Uh, employers have also noticed better productivity, reduced costs with physical offices and decreased absenteeism, as well as better use of technology. Uh, as teleworking is slowly becoming more and more successful, it looks like many organizations will be shifting to teleworking as a concept of either a definite or a hybrid alternative for workers. Another massive change we've observed in the industry is an important, important emphasis being placed on both wellness and sustainability. Many of us will be placing an extreme emphasis on wellness and well-being, both for the hotels as well as the consumers. Uh, such as in-house exercise, sports, fresh and organic food, nutrition, self-care, medical checks, etc. We're seeing, in fact, an increasing number of healthy eateries and wellness retreats opening globally. We've always had, you know, the six senses and amans of the world that have been doing the same, but it's now becoming increasingly popular and becoming more accessible to the middle class as well. In terms of sustainability before the pandemic and for the last couple of years, sustainability has already been a very important key topic being addressed by individuals, especially by the millennials and the Gen Zs who actually need to live in this world for way longer. And um, consumer behavior has sort of become more oriented and towards almost reduced uh, waste and becoming more towards conspicuous consumption. Sustainable products, brands, eco-friendly policies, ecological products, everyone's becoming more and more responsible and are trying to tackle these environmental concerns for a greater interest towards the future. I think one of the biggest things observed in the hospitality industry, at least in the last year, is this concept of revenge tourism. I feel like with everyone kind of being cooped up in their houses over the last two years, has made everyone so antsy and so anxious and so desperate to almost get out of their houses that there was this little period of concentrated demand that was released immediately after uh, COVID-19 sort of started to dwindle away. Most hotels had that kind of option to accurately capture this change in customer demand and how to correspondingly develop a new customer experience. And the hospitality industry is one of those industries that has managed to turn this crisis into opportunity and therefore have seized this opportunity for development, becoming almost a challenge for hoteliers to ponder. So with revenge tourism coming up and up, one of the main factors that has led to us actually being able to capture this demand is technology. So let's say when you integrate something like facial recognition technology within your hotels or, or resorts, it speeds up your check-in process. Instead of going up to the reception, giving them your ID, going through that long, tedious process of checking, all you go up to, you have an app on your phone, it, it scans the app and immediately you're checked in. And that saves a lot of time, not only from the guest's experience, but from the hotel's uh, side as well. 
So with technology coming up and up, we have something that we now call the global smart hospitality market. And it's all smart hospitality from now. So that is projected to grow at a constant annual growth rate of almost 13%, reaching a total market size of almost $13 billion in 2025, as opposed to about $6 billion in 2019. So the demand for smart hospitality is boosting in order to serve excellent customer service. As such, the demand for real-time optimized guest experience management is increasing, which is bolstering the market growth of smart hospitality. For example, in some hotels, customers use their smartphone to control the room's environment by way of allowing to remotely open and shut the blinds, maybe regulating your room temperature, controlling your ACs. Global hotel chains are increasingly investing heavily in these smart hospitality solutions to improve the customer experience. You have several hotels like the Citizen M's, uh, the Hilton's, the, uh, the JW Marriott's that are slowly, slowly developing these smart hospitality solutions. Moreover, a lot of them are adopting these solutions to save operational cost, as well as it generates more revenue while enhancing hospitality services to the customers. So several market players in the global smart hospitality market are now increasingly following these growth strategies to stay ahead and maintain their market share. For example, early on in the pandemic in 2019, Intercontinental Shenzhen signed a strategic cooperation agreement with Huawei and Telecom to create the world's first 5G smart hotel. So however, factors such as high initial cost of deployment and lack of technically skilled professionals is hindering this smart hospitality market growth. So what the, what the companies mainly do need is investment in training for their professionals so that they can kind of ride this new wave into tomorrow. Now, talking about restaurants, restaurants, mainly dine-in brands, are diversifying into food delivery models or cloud kitchens or dark kitchens. This is a concept that's in, that's existed for a very long time and now has been reinforced by the pandemic. And it's a very, very widely sought after option because they require a way smaller space. The food delivery model and fine dining do not compete with each other and they're completely different revenue models for us. For example, the Indian consumer loves to go out to restaurants. We love to go out and we love to celebrate. So this kind of in-dining experience will continue. Meanwhile, food delivery has been a revelation for us, at least, because it's a high margin, viable model and it will continue to grow. ITC hotels offered workcation and petcation packages. You can take your pets to the hotel now as well. With work going remote, customers opting for way longer workcations at hotels and workforce rationalization, all of these large massive hotel chains are promoting small inventories. They're promoting boutique stays, experiential stays which are growing at very fast rates. ITC, in fact, launched a new boutique hotel brand called Story. Taj entered the homestay segment with Ama Trails and Stays, and the younger demographic wants an experience-based accommodation. We're tired of going to hotels, seeing the same bed, seeing the same rooms. We want experiences. And that is something that a lot of brands are now tapping into. Going forward, travelers want more safety. They want hygiene, they want security. And all of these small boutique inventory properties, as they're growing at an exponential rate, it has to be a big contributor. Now, the hotel industry is far from the only hospitality sector exploring the metaverse. Because of cutting edge VR technology, several restaurants can provide the tools necessary for customers to fully explore the menu, even before booking. In fact, now you can even see how the meal is prepared or even check out the facilities. You can maybe even take a walk with the chef and go through his whole process of picking out ingredients. All of this is possible now because of the metaverse. Some of the biggest hospitality marketing trends right now are focused on the idea of bringing outdoor experiences into your home environment. And through the metaverse, takeaway restaurants could allow users to even place their order at a virtual restaurant, interact with restaurant employees who are represented by avatars of their own. Another very exciting thing mainly for introverts, would probably be nightclubs and casinos in the metaverse. Nightclubs are just another part of the industry where metaverse hospitality options are starting to just emerge. Virtual recreations of nightclubs can allow people to experience the several benefits of visiting a nightclub, including music, dancing, interacting socially, without having to even leave your home. It's really an introvert's dream. 
Virtual nightclub promoters can then monetize this experience, offering options for users to improve their avatars, access new music. In fact, even casinos can now op operate in a similar space, allowing customers to play games like poker, roulette, blackjack in a virtual casino, where they can interact with people as well as explore a realistic recreation of that experience. I think one of the biggest trends that we will be seeing now and not in the next two years is hospitality brands using NFTs or non-fungible tokens, which utilize blockchain technology to become almost utility-based NFTs in, in today's world. We already know that there are several artists launching NFTs and owning it is almost like owning a digital asset or a digital piece of art. You are the only owner of that asset. So now there are several companies like Marriott, like Budweiser, like Stella Artois, which have completely launched several NFTs. In fact, Budweiser launched about 2,000 beer cans and customers have already started to purchase these NFTs and sell them at a significantly higher rate. There are several restaurants today that are launching NFTs, almost which we would call utility-based NFTs. And those utility-based NFTs can be used at the restaurant to avail certain perks almost. You know, so today, if you own an NFT from my restaurant, you could come in and maybe get 10% off every meal that you have there for X number of years. In fact, a lot of people find blockchain very confusing. But the concept that many people have of this hospitality metaverse is completely linked to blockchain technology. And it's very important to understand that it can play a role beyond this too. For example, blockchain tech, which is one of the most secure um, encrypted technology services across the world, can be used for ID verification to process secure payments or even track loyalty programs. So we are moving towards the future very, very soon. Thank you so much. I hope this talk was insightful. Thank you, DLC. Thank you to everyone listening. And I hope I could sort of demystify the metaverse, demystify NFTs, and explain how we're using such a big concept in the industry that is hospitality. Thank you.